Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Roto channel. I have promised to bring you more shows about steampunk, and here is another one. Today I am reviewing a series of steampunk novels by another author whom I have actually met, and I've spoken to him at numerous local conventions. He is a fellow Southwesterner, and his day job, more properly his night job, is being an astronomer at Kitt Peak Observatory in New Mexico. The coolest thing about this particular series is that it starts out in the Southwest and stars a protagonist who is a Southwesterner, and it does come back here at times. And so being familiar with this area, I love it when people do fiction from this area. The author is David Lee Summers, and his series is called Clockwork Legion. Summers is not as well known as he should be. He's written quite a few books, including fantasy and science fiction, and of course, the steampunk series. He has also written short stories, a whole bunch of them, and some have appeared in collections of which I have spoken, such as the Weird Western collection Straight Out of Tombstone. Some of these collections he has also edited such as Kepler's Cowboys, which is about the Kepler worlds. There, there's this major telescope called the Kepler telescope that has discovered all these star systems that probably have planets. So the idea is, what if humans colonize these planets and we have like a frontier society in the early times? So it's a fun concept. And I have read this one too. Now I haven't reviewed Clockwork Legion as a series before because there were only two books at the time that I did my best series video. And my cutoff was three. There had to be at least three books in order to consider it a series. So that's why I did not get into that list, even though I did really like the book, the first book anyway. And I did select that first book, which is called Owl Dance, for my top 10 steampunk novels. Very recently, Mr. Summers has written two more books to round off the series quite nicely. So I figured now it's a series and I must review it. I have very recently completed reading these last two. Now, only the first two have audiobook versions, so these three and four I did do in ebook. These books feature adventure, travel, and romance, as well as lots of cool mechanical contraptions. And one of the unique features is there are meddling aliens. As usual, I'll go through the four books in order. Number one, Owl Dance, 2011 Hadrosaur Productions. And I believe Hadrosaur is probably Summer's own little publishing company, just as I have my own, Nakota. And it's good to promote fellow indie or semi-independent authors. This book introduces the two main characters, Ramon Morales, a small town sheriff in New Mexico, and Fatime Karimi, who has left Persia to escape an arranged marriage. She travels the area in a horse-drawn wagon working as a healer, a medicine woman, as you would, and she gets accused of witchcraft. <laughs> and uh, Ramon, being the sheriff, has to help her out. And in doing so, he falls madly in love with her. She is intelligent. She is beautiful. She is charming. She is exotic. She's pretty much everything he needs in a wife, except she's not Catholic. <laughs> but we come to that later. Another character is Legion, an alien entity comprised of all these little nanobots, and all these tiny, tiny little machines, yet he is conscious as a unique entity. It has traveled through space somehow, and it gets to Earth. It's effectively immortal, and it inhabits human minds and gets to understand what humans are doing in, in our language and so on. and. Legion decides that humanity needs to be united. And so it's going to try and have one political entity take over the world. And that entity it chooses is the Russian Empire and the Tsar. So he's helping out the Russians. So this causes a lot of political upheaval and a lot of technological progress because he's, or it is giving the Russians all this advanced tech. You no know, stuff that they can handle like airships. And... It's interesting because Legion can split up into different 
people. So it's separate entities for a while, separate minds, and then comes back together and to learn what, it, to digest what it's learned. And it's an interesting character because it actually does have an arc. It actually does learn from its contact with humans. Also in this book, we have a kind of a mad professor character who calls himself Marvellosa, meaning marvelous in Spanish. And he's invented these mechanical creatures such as owls and wolves, which are, are really cool, very steampunk. Number two, Lightning Wolves, 2021 Hadrosaur Productions. Now, Mr. Summers, obviously he waited 10 years to continue on his steampunk series, but I'm glad he did. At first, I assumed that the lightning wolf in the title would be those mechanical wolves of Marvellosas from the first book, but they're not. In this case, the lightning wolf is a steam-powered motorcycle, and they're ridden by a, this particular one is ridden by a female gunslinger who wants to become a marshal, which is kind of a challenge for a woman at the time in the 1870s. Now, in this year of 1877, Ramon and his betrothed Fatime travel to Colorado and to California to try to head off the Russian invasion, which is in full force. By now, Ramon has made contact with Legion, or rather, Legion contacted him, and Legion is starting to understand that maybe the humans don't want it interfering in their business, and maybe this has made things worse. So it's he's kind of using Legion as a way to communicate with the other parts of Legion, which are currently with the Russians. In this novel, we have adventure and excitement, you know, airship battles and so on. And also R Ramon and Fatime's relationship is progressing. And they can marry because she's not Muslim, so he wouldn't have to convert. <laughs> she is a Baha'i which is a rather interesting and eccentric religion, which actually did or originate, I think, in Iraq, actually. Uh, but uh, it's considered heresy by Muslims. But uh, she is a Baha'i, and Baha'is believe in the tr fundamental truth of all religions. So she can wed him without either of them having to convert. Number three, The Brazen Shark, 2022, also Hadrosaur Productions. And this name, a very cool name, comes from a chemically powered submersible captained by a notorious pirate turned merchant. He's gone straight, <laughs> at least so he says. Ramon, in the process, has lost his job as a sheriff because he crossed this powerful mine owner. And he's now wanted by the U.S. government as a possible traitor because he supposedly colluded with the Russians in San Francisco. Actually, he was negotiating because they were in contact with Legion. But, of course, the U.S. government doesn't know about Legion or believe in it. So he and Fatima, now married, have fled to Mexico, and they've met up with Cisneros, the captain, the former pirate, who is going to go to Hawaii. And he says, why don't you come along with me? You two haven't had a honeymoon. And they agree. Well, meanwhile, they're kind of worrying about, you know, going back to the States and uh, trying to clear their names and exonerate themselves. So that's kind of in the background, even as they're enjoying the beach. It turns out that Cisneros has contacts in Japan. And suddenly there is urgent business for him. And he says, well, I have to go to Japan, but I'll pick you up on the way back. And they say, no, we want to come along because we haven't seen Japan and this is a great opportunity. So they do. And as happens, Legion's meddling has really stirred things up. And although it's no longer helping, actively helping the Russians, the Russians are still kind of trying to expand. And there's also a Japanese female samurai who wants to overthrow the emperor because she doesn't like how it's, you know, overturned, how it's basically outlawed the samurai. And so she's going to fake a Russian attack. So this provides all sorts of chaos and opportunities for Ramon to play peacemaker, as he does. 
and, you know, Fatime to get into trouble, as she does. <laughs> and so there's a lot of adventure here. And eventually, of course, Legion is learning from this and is trying to help. And although it does not want to meddle in human affairs anymore, it kind of needs to help clean up the mess that it's made. Finally, we have book number four, Owl Riders, also 2022. So he's been pretty busy, Mr. Summers has. So the name comes from a book within a book, which is a story of Ramon and Fatime's adventures by an East Coast journalist who happened to meet them, who's intrigued with their role in ending the Russian-American War. And this kind of helped to get them a pardon from the U.S. government. The government realizes that they didn't intend any disloyalty. And Ramon, in fact, has gone to law school, and he is now a U.S. attorney in New Orleans. Fatime has her own apothecary. So she's really into the local herbal and medical scene, and she has some Creole friends who are also into kind of the almost the voodoo stuff, which is always fun when it appears in a steampunk novel. Now, Fatime's former betrothed is a Persian merchant, and he's traveling to the United States, and he happens to find a copy of this book, and he reads it, and he's enraged because she has just disappeared. You know, nobody knows, nobody in Iran knows where she is, and he still loves her. Even though it was an arranged marriage, he is obsessed with her, and he says, this is illegitimate, this marriage of him, of hers, to this Mexican man. I am going to steal her away and take her back to Persia. So while Ramon is off on a mission of his own, he is called away uh, to Arizona to help negotiate a agreement between the uh, Apaches who are having this uprising and the mine owners who are encroaching on their territory. So while he's gone, he swipes Fatime. Now, this is 10 years later, and they have a young daughter called Alethea. She's kind of abandoned uh, by this kidnapping, but she goes to their Creole friends and who try to help rescue her before, Fat before Fatime can be taken away from the country. And Alethea, she's a young girl, but she's also trying to rescue her mother, and she gets herself into all sorts of trouble. Of course, Ramon has to come back and save the day, but it's it's pretty interesting and fun, and it's kind of a heroic challenge for Ramon to rescue the woman he loves. At the end, Fatime wants to make up with her parents and go to Persia to explain what she did and why she did it, and hope they'll accept that, which is another interesting aspect of it. Now, those are the four books, and at the end of book four, David Lee mentions how Ramon is going to have continuing adventures and Fatime, which is great. So it looks like the series is going to continue. Now I shall do pros and cons. Like the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences, Clockwork Legion has all the elements that make up a good steampunk. It has the historical setting, it has the anachronistic tech, Interesting characters, adventure, danger, and lots of great gadgets. There's not as much humor as MOPO, as I like to call it, but that's not a major detraction. I mean, there's a few kind of funny scenes, like, for example, uh, Fatime forces Ramon to wear this bathing suit, which is like a Victorian full-body suit. Still, he thinks it's embarrassing. He's a very macho Latin man, and he thinks that's humiliating. <laughs> And so there are some semi-funny things in it. I had seen books three and four, or if I had seen books in three and four, when I made my series list, it would have been on there. It would have probably been number two or somewhere near the top. It couldn't, couldn't unseat the ministry, unfortunately, but it would have been up there. And so I do like the fact that he's continuing it. I love the Southwestern setting. Uh, the diversity of characters is fascinating. I don't value diversity for its own sake. I'm not one of those people. But if it's interesting, if it brings you know different cultures to the table, that's pretty cool. And he does have all these cultures. Hispanic, Iranian, 
Japanese, Russian, Apache, Creole, and of course, good old white American. <laughs> there are a variety of cultural elements in here, and I think he's done a little bit of his homework. I mean, he does seem to know a bit about Bushido, for example, the Japanese code of honor. He's also added in the element of the alien nanobot creature. It was pretty interesting, and it has its own character, and it has its own character arc, which you often don't see with aliens, with menacing aliens. They don't usually come to understand humans, or at least to think they understand humans, so that makes it a little bit different. Finally, it handles some rather culturally sensitive issues, especially the idea of Islam's rules on apostasy, which is what Fatima is. She's an apostate. She went from an Islamic family and became Baha'i, which is very, very forbidden <laughs> in that part of the world. So uh, kudos to him, because I would have a hard time attempting that. Now, the cons. And they are few and they are minor, but I have to do them because I want to be fair. I want to be fair-minded. And I'm not just giving him a pass because I've met the fellow. So stylistically, it's very good. It's well-paced, but there's a bit too much introspection for my taste in places. I mean, especially Ramon and Fatme do a lot of thinking about you know, humanity and, and what the world's coming to and and uh, the role of war and peace and all that stuff. It's okay, though. Legion can be a bit of a deus ex machina in places. Although I did say I liked Legion, so, uh, so it's a two-edged sword. The visit to Iran in the fourth book is a bit improbable, it seems. I mean, Islam is really hostile towards people who abandon it. And, you know... Sometimes families turn against their own. And the question is, will Fatima's family accept her despite her, you know, going against their wishes? So you have to read the fourth book to find out. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, there was this thing I just couldn't put my finger on. I really had to think about this for a while. But as a white author... Summers has to handle these non-white characters very delicately. And that's the feeling I got. Now, now personally, I don't know if, if Summers has any Hispanic heritage. He might, for all I know. I've never asked him. <laughs> because he has a lot of prominent Hispanic characters in the books. And although that would make it more politically correct, I really don't care. Anybody should be able to write about anything that they're willing to make a good attempt at. You know, good faith effort. And often this encourages people from that culture to write about it as well, which is a great thing. Now, of course, since there are so many non-white characters in here, I think he kind of sometimes handles them with kid gloves, especially Ramon and Fatima. They are fallible, as a good character should be, as human beings, but they're not as flawed. You know, they don't really have any major character faults. And therefore, that makes them a little less interesting uh, than they would be. And you think, well, you don't want to be labeled a racist by, you know, engaging in like Mexican stereotypes, for example. But it's still unfortunate. And, and just as another example, when the Apaches are introduced in book four, they are rather well spoken. <laughs> and, you know, rather they're saying, well, you, you white folks, you stole our land. Whereas I think the Apache response in the 1880s, at least, would have been to say, you're going to die, white man, <laughs> because they were very fierce warriors. But of course, you know, they have to handle it with delicacy. Other possible detractions, book three and four, don't have an audio version, which will be a problem for some people. It wasn't for me. Still, I love this series. I highly recommend it. I give it 4.5 out of five gears. And as I said, I would put it high on my list of steampunk series if I were to redo that video. This has been my review of David Lee Summers' Clockwork Legion series, a very interesting Southwestern-themed uh, book progression and still continuing. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Please like and subscribe because that helps us get out the good steampunk word and promote this genre and other well-known and not so well-known science fiction works. Please look at my 
works on Amazon and consider buying them. I have placed a list of the links in the description. For now, this is Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Thank you.